take a look at this scenario. We have two roads here that are parallel to one another. We have this black road here. This is road one, and it's uh, parallel to the second road, road two. Okay, so these these two roads are parallel to one another. Okay, <clears throat> and they're connected by this reverse compound curve. I've already drawn it in blue uh, and green. And let's say we wanted to figure out a couple different things. The first being this distance here, which is the the perpendicular distance between road one and road two. And then I also wanted to figure out um, what this distance was. And this distance is called x or the transition length. The transition length is basically the distance uh, it takes for a curve uh, to transition from a straight line here, so road one, uh, to road two. Uh, that's the transition length, right? So uh, I guess the first thing we want to do is look at one curve at a time. We have curve one here, and that's radius one. And then we have curve two in green, and that's a radius two, right? Um, we also notice that this angle here is the interior angle for curve one, and this angle here is the interior angle for curve 2. Since this line and this line are parallel to one another, we know that this angle and this angle from geometry are um, opposite interior angles. In other words, delta 1 is equal to delta 2. So I'm just going to call delta 1 delta and delta 2 delta. I'm saying this angle is equal to this angle, right? Now, the next thing we want to do is draw a line that is tangent to EC1, which is the end of curve 1, and BC2, which is the beginning of curve 2, so the end of the blue curve and the beginning of this green curve. Okay, I want to draw a line that's tangent uh, to both of these curves. And you'll notice I'll get something like that, right? And this line and the line that runs from origin 1 to origin 2, uh, this is perpendicular. Okay, so if I drew a tangent from uh, BC, BC1 here, and I drew a tangent uh, to EC2, I'll see here that I have a point of intersection 1, point of intersection 2, okay? Now there's one more line I want to draw, and this is a line that's going to be parallel uh, to this road and this road, and it's going to run through the center, or I, not the center, but the PRC. This is the PRC, and PRC stands for the point of reverse curvature. In the last video we discussed what that was, okay? so. I'm going to call, I'm going to define a couple more parameters before we can derive expressions to figure out what P and X are. I'm going to say this is Y1. Y1 is simply the distance from the uh, road 1, the perpendicular distance from road 1 to this dashed orange line I just drew. And I'm going to say, uh, similarly, this is Y2, which is the perpendicular distance from road 2 uh, to the orange dashed line I just drew, right? And <clears throat> since this blue curve has a radius of 1, I need to figure out what this distance is. The distance from here to here, right? And that, well, you'll, you'll notice that there's this special triangle that's formed, and I apologize for this clutter, but you'll notice that there's a there's a triangle here. There's a triangle here. And this hypotenuse of this triangle is the radius of curve 1. So this distance here is what I want to figure out. Okay, If this is radius 1 and this is interior angle delta, I can say that this distance is um, R1 cosine delta, or, yeah, R1 cosine delta. And the same thing applies to the other curve. If I 
if I notice that this is perpendicular, if this orange dashed line is perpendicular this, to this green line, I'll notice another triangle, a triangle that looks something like that. All right, and the distance from here to here is, well, the hypotenuse is R2, so this must be um, R2 minus, or I'm sorry, this is R2 cosine delta 2. R2 cosine delta 2, and delta 2 is equal to delta, so I'm just going to write a delta there, right? So, if you, if you look closely, you'll notice that P is equal to, or P is the perpendicular distance between these two roads, right? It's equal to Y1 plus Y2, right? The distance from here to here, the distance from here to here. So, I guess uh, below here I can, I can write, uh, let, me, let me keep the diagram in the video, right? So, I'm going to write P1, or P, I'm sorry, P is equal to y1 plus y2, right? And y1, if you if we look closely, we notice that the distance from here to origin 1, so from EC1, I'm sorry, BC1 to origin 1, that's R1, right? That's the radius of curve 1. So y1 is essentially R1 minus, minus this distance, right, to give us this distance. So y1 is r1 minus r1 cosine delta. All right, and to that we're going to add y2. And if we look over here, the distance from EC2, which is the end of curve for this green curve, to origin 2 um, is radius 2, radius of the green curve, right? So um, this y2 distance is really r2 minus this distance, r2 cosine delta, okay? So let's let's make this a little simpler. Let's, I don't really like this equation. Um, you'll notice that from both of these terms that are in parentheses, we can factor out the radii, or the radii, right? r1, 1 minus uh, cosine delta plus r2, 1 minus cosine delta, right? And from these two terms, we can factor out a 1 minus cosine theta, or I'm sorry, 1 minus cosine delta. And we have left is r1 plus r2. So p, oops, you can't see that in the video, p, which is a perpendicular distance from this road to this road, um, is equal to uh, 1 minus cosine delta, in parentheses, times r1 plus r2, or the radii of the sum of the radii of both curves, okay? I'm actually going to stop the video here. In the next video, we'll, we'll take a look at this x distance, which is called the transition length. So we figured out what p is. Now we need to figure out what x is, or the transition length. All right, so see you in the next video.